Well, it's going to be, Butch. Treason, impeachment, or something great. Marcus Scott, the reporting on uh, that that very, the very subject. That we're going to do something. So the big talk in the news right now, impeachment. The Democrats are pivoting, pivoting to impeachment. We got to impeach the president. He's horrible. Oh my God, he he obstructed, he colluded. So they're gonna they they're continuing with that despite uh, the evidence. Because again, you could anybody any two people can read the same document and get totally different opinions. And that's the place we are right now. One side looks at evidence, and the other side looks at uh, the emotion of the of the the emotional charge of the moment. And uh, so that's that's the the essence right now of impeachment. So let's look at some of the. Uh, some of the, the finer rhetoric that's circulating around right now. Here's, here's Tucker Carlson reporting on uh, Fox put this piece together. It's pretty good. Watch. Anybody who looks at the politics of this, it's, it's, it's a thorny path. Um, but uh, I think history is going to look back at this moment and what we choose to do uh, and see if we did the right thing. And I think the right thing right now is to hold this president accountable for his actions. We have to get the show on the road. We have to have these investigations done on TV under the banner of an impeachment inquiry. I don't think there's any way around that. Make everybody vote. Make everybody in the House vote. Send it over to the Senate. Make them vote. Put them on the record and make them live with those votes for the rest of what the lives. What if he used... But impeachment is a process, not a thing. They need to move toward it strategically, and they need to make sure they're bringing the American people along with them. I would suggest that he told us enough to interpret what he said as a referral for impeachment. Wow. Impeachment. That's the Democrats. Um, that's their that's their strategy to take back the White House from Donald Trump. Right. It's, and in stereo. Right. And is there any I mean, is it when you when you use logic, when you lo- use your your eyes and your ears and your gut and you listen to what other people are telling you, is there any rationale to want to impeach Donald Trump right now, other than use it as political fodder, uh, no, there isn't. Uh, I mean, th- there just isn't. There's no, you know, how do you collude? How do you how do you obstruct something that didn't even happen? Right. So, so, so that's that's the that's one argument. Now, here, here's another one. Right. Here's his Hollywood doubling down on the same lie. Right. Here's impeachment for no with no evidence. And here's this this jack off, right? J- uh, fucking Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro used to is in three of my favorite movies: Godfather, uh, you know, Goodfellas, and uh, A Bronx Tale. Now he's just now he's just some old cocksucker. Right? This guy is fucking. He's pissed off because Trump. He thinks Trump's a racist, and 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 De Niro has a black wife. I mean, you you insulted my black wife, my black wife. <laughs> You may have seen me on Saturday Night Live as a certain federal prosecutor. He's going he's gonna to make a case for, just listen to this. They, they hire a bunch of, a bunch of uh, failed prosecutors, all people that, that were removed probably under Trump, right? <laughs> so, so now they're bitter, and they, they round up this asshole and uh, a bunch of other playful, pay-for-play prosecutors. And this is, this is what it sounds like. That was acting. But now we're going to hear from some real federal prosecutors. I have so much admiration for their intelligence and dedication to their work. Re- this is this is what a rich scumbag does in his spare time, right? Because he has all the he has all the cameras and the people. He could put something together like this, right? All he's got to do is get the you know schmooze some some failed prosecutors, get them on board, right? Have a nice party, give them give them serve them frog raw and fucking you know. And, Wine and dine them, make them feel important. Make them feel like they're doing something important. And this is the result of, of, of that, because he should hang out with Bill de Blasio. Bill de Blasio has a black wife, too. Recently, over a 1,000 former federal prosecutors who served under both Republican and Democratic presidents have united to sign a statement to help Americans understand what's actually in the Mueller report. Their conclusion should trouble us all. Listen to them in their own words. We are former federal prosecutors. We served under Democratic presidents. And Republican presidents. We carefully read and analyzed the Mueller report. And we all strongly believe that there is more than enough evidence to indict President Trump. If you look at their names, I guarantee you they were all fired because they were all Obama, 
all, you know, all, all so Obama dick suckers, right? And Trump, <laughs> Trump probably removed all these people. Yeah, sure, there's probably a few hundred, right? That, that's my, my suspicion. I'm not going to dive in, but it, it's just fun to listen to. For multiple felony counts of obstruction of justice. Of obstruction of justice. Of obstruction of justice. Of obstruction of justice. The evidence shows that President Trump tried to stop, limit, and interfere with the Mueller investigation and other federal investigations surrounding him. False. How did he do that? Here's what the evidence shows. President Trump tried to fire Mueller. And then tried to get others to lie and create false evidence about it. President Trump tried to make sure that Mueller's investigation didn't focus on him or his campaign by controlling who was in charge of it and what they were allowed to look at. And he tried to prevent witnesses from cooperating with law enforcement. It's all in the report. You should read it for yourself. There's more than enough evidence to convince the jury beyond a reasonable doubt that President Trump committed the crime of obstruction of justice several times. But the Department of Justice has a long-standing policy that prevents a sitting president from being charged with a crime. That's why Mueller didn't say whether he thought President Trump obstructed justice. But if he weren't in the White House, President Trump would be charged with serious crimes. This isn't even a close case. If you or I did what President Trump did, we'd be facing prison. And no one, not even the president, should be above the law. In the words of the Mueller report, no person is above the law. You know what I'm saying? Like it's wow, look at that. That's some that's some that's some nifty propaganda right there. That's that's Robert De Niro uh, uh, probably has, you know, 500 million dollars. Lives down in down in Tribeca, up in the sky in Tribeca. He's got his well. He always had a black wife, and now I, I guess the black wife dumped him. <laughs> so, but he he's he's a he's an elitist, right? And and it's not hard to to purchase. You know, federal prosecutors are as we see are for sale, right? They're all for sale. You give them money, and they fucking they'll say whatever you want, right? They'll do whatever you want, right? Because they're they're, they're patrol. So so that's that's impeachment. Impeachment because he he obstructed. And that's that's a, that's a, you. They think the Democrats think that that's a winning strategy. Where's the talk about the people? Where does this help any of the people at all? Right. So on the other side of that is Trump. Right? The Constitution says treason is punishable by death. You've accused your adversaries of treason. Who specifically are you accusing of treason? Well, I think a number of people, and I think what you look is that. Uh, they have unsuccessfully tried to take down the wrong person. If you look at Comey, if you look at McCabe, if you look at probably people hi people higher than that, if you look at Strzok, if you so above above that is is Loretta Lynch. Let's be clear. He's he's accusing Comey, McCabe, Strzok, and and those above him. Who's above him is is Loretta Lynch, the then a uh, AG, and uh, Obama. And, of course, you know, well, Hillary Clinton wasn't above anybody, but you can throw her in there, too. If you look at his lover, Lisa Page, his wonderful lover, the two lovers, they talked openly. You know, they didn't use their private server because they didn't want to get caught. So they... I'm going to miss his humor. If nothing else about Trump, uh, I'll miss his humor. I mean, I will, but... Use the government server. That was not a good move. All right, so, so there you go. You got impeachment. You got treason. Right? Now, what about the 99%? What about the ninety nine percent? What what have you what have we heard? What do we get? What do the people get of any of this? Okay, we we may get a little bit of a cleaning of a ha of house, right? We may get a prosecution of some high level official officials, and it could set a tone for future prosecution and kind of like a a scare tactic, scare them all into place. But that's really not what's happening because we're seeing that we're seeing that that the they want to impeach Trump and get rid of his swamp, right? And and Trump is trying to accuse the old swamp of treason, right? But the new the new swamp that Trump is bringing in is just as bad, in my view, right? You got you got who, it, with the, with the exception of William Barr right now because he hasn't really done anything devastating in, to the Democrats. He's done the the ultimate devastation, which is not accuse the president of. All the things they want uh, him to be accused of, but other than other than Barr, they're all they're all swamp creatures. Pompeo, Elliot Abrams, B Bolton, they're all scum, right? Pence. Right, so so through all of this, right? What's what's in it for the ninety nine percent? 
What's in it? Where's we may get some precedence, but you know we're switching out one swamp for the other. Right, but but look at this, look at this. Oh, look at look at this. Watch. Who's this? Who's this? Bernie Sanders rally draws so many overflow crowd fills city hall steps across the street. Now look, you can turn you turn it off now if you want because oh you'll say oh Bernie Sanders oh he he let Hillary Clinton fuck his ass. Oh, uh, he he said the Russians hacked the election. Oh, Bernie Sanders uh, got paid off and bought a summer home for himself. <laughs> Say all those things. Well, you know, it's it's stupid, right? First of all, Bernie Sanders didn't get paid off. There's no evidence of that. He sold the book and made a million dollars and bought a summer house for seven hundred thousand. Uh, oh, for shame! Oh, for shame! The man writes a best-selling book, right? but but that's besides the point. You can you can argue that on your own time. I'll put it in the thread, and so I can ignore it. And so so, but look at the crowd. Look at the crowd. Oh my God! Look, just look at look at what's going on, and you don't hear about it in the mainstream media. Right? Today, Bernie Sanders hosted what is likely his largest rally yet in 2020. The, the numbers are significant since the park can hold between 25 and 50,000 people. <laughs> so early reports show that there are about 15,000, whatever, man. It's a lot of people. Look at the pictures. Forget about the words. Look at the pictures. Look at this. Look at the picture. Look at all the people. Look at it. Joe, he's doing this night after night after day after day after night. Joe Biden got 5,000 probably paid trolls. <laughs> he had one big event, and it was a bomb. He said nothing that, that could hold anyone's attention or gather. Uh, he's pulling, he's, they're doing the Hillary Clinton with uh, Joe Biden, right? So Joe Biden is, is, is designed to stop this. That's a Democrat strategy. Impeach, impeach, impeach. Pretend that Joe Biden is leading. And stop this movement because this is what represents the 99%. This is what's in my in best interest and definitely your best interest that's watching us. And you could disagree. You could think whatever you want to think. Socialism, he's, a, he's, a, he's too old. He's, he's this, he's that. It's not about cult of personality. It's not about Bernie Sanders. It's about, the, it's about getting money out of politics. The reason why you have paid off politicians. The reason why you have federal prosecutors that will say anything on camera is because of the money in politics. They're paid off. Right? It's, it's, not, it's not hard to figure out. Right? And here's the only candidate that not only is saying it, but actually believes in it and has stood on it is his whole career. Right? So why is, he, why is it so obvious that he's the right pick and, and the, the mainstream media is ignoring him, pretending, actually faking the numbers. I'll show you those numbers in a second faking the numbers pretending that Joe Biden is leading. <laughs> Joe Biden. Look at the look at the size of this crowd. Look at the crowd. Right? Inescapable. I mean there's Bernie's in the middle somewhere, right? He's buried in the middle of this massive massive crowd, right? Real, real stuff. Right? Look at this picture. Look at this. Look at the look at the pictures. I mean it's just uh, so that's that's reality. That's what's going on in this country right now. There's one guy. There's there's the impeachment idea, right? And that's that's the Democratic establishment's idea to muddy the waters for another a year and get the whole public watching this fake impeachment process that will never happen and never get through Senate. But that's not the point. The point is to use taxpayer money and use Congress. To to uh, for a charade to to pr to promote this idea that Trump is not reelectable, right? That's the that's the strategy to smear the other party. Right? Now I, I don't want any part of that. I think it's it's ridiculous. On the other hand, Trump because Trump doesn't have any policy. Trump is a failure in economics. Trump is is in, is is for uh, invading Iran and invading, you know. Uh, Venezuela, he's giving tax breaks to the billionaires, money out of politics. Trump loves money in politics. The, the, he's, so, he's become so cozy with the establishment. It's, uh, it, you, it's like the pigs in the room. You can't tell. You look from man to pig, from pig to man. You can't tell 
uh, who's who anymore with Trump. Trump is is just Trump has joined the ranks of the the uh, the oligarchy, right? So so how is Bernie Sanders doing it? How's he doing it? Watch. I know, and you know. What? That in Nevada and in Vermont and all over this country, there are people 80, 85, 90 years of our age who are trying to survive on twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars a year social security. A simple message, a simple, a simple direct message that that connects with connects with people. That's how he's doing it. Do you hear Bernie Sanders talking about impeachment? And, and and treason and, and Russiagate and no, he doesn't talk about it. He doesn't, I mean, he's he's teaching us that. I mean, we, he, we laugh at him, say, Trump, you know, Bernie, grow some balls and, and attack, you know, attack the, uh, you know, talk about Russiagate, talk about it like everybody else, talk about election fraud. Right? And uh, he doesn't because the guy's fundamental theory, his fundamental, um, uh, you know, belief is that even if you become president, Right? Even if you talk about all those things and you somehow, you know, s- you know, sneak into the presidency, you still can't win any policy for the people unless you have the people with you through and through. Now, some argue that Trump had the people with him, but not really. Trump had, Trump had, you know, very a select, you know, a select cut of Americans, but mostly the, the thinking crowd that you know thought he was a joke right and still think he's a joke they think he's a you know people like me for example i i only saw trump as a wrecking ball a, a funny wrecking ball someone would come in and maybe lock a few people up you know shake it up right but it, it turns out that he's 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 not even able to do that he's he, all he is so far is is bravado banging on his chest throwing around you know but here the simple message let's listen more listen to this simple message and my God, I have no idea in the world how anybody at 85 or 90 can survive on 12, 13, or 14 thousand dollars. But there are millions of folks who are trying to do that. So no, I helped lead the fight in the United States Senate to say very clearly, no, we are not going to cut Social Security. We're going to expand Social Security benefits for those who need it. And we do that by lifting the cap on taxable income. All right? So right now... That's one way of doing it. Right now, you got somebody who's making $10 million a year, somebody who's making $100,000. Let's get to it. It's so simple. And that is taking on the greed and, in many cases, the illegal behavior of the pharmaceutical industry in this country. Last year, the 10 major drug companies in America, hold, hold your hats here, 10 major drug companies in America made $69 billion in profit. 10 companies, $69 billion in profit. And you know how they managed to make so much money? because they are charging you by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Do you all know that? Now, how come that isn't the, the headline the headline on the New York Times or the, the lead story on MSNBC? How come that's not what Rachel Maddow was talking about? That the 10 corporations, the 10 pharmaceutical companies in, in the United States charge us more. They, they, you can get that pill for one-tenth of the price in Canada. How come that, how come people allow, how come people, how, why would you rather see the president impeached or the, the opposing team sentenced to treason when nobody's really talking about none of, none of this is going to happen for you except for this one simple message. And you say, well, well, he's not very exciting. What do you see in that guy? Conti, what do you see in this guy? He's just an old man. He's 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 t- he took the money from Hillary. Don't you get it, man? You don't see it, dude. You're you're stuck in 2016, dude. Dude, wake up, wake up. Trump is for the people. Trump. <laughs> That's what you guys say, right? But what? But it's just a, it's not about a cult of personality. Again, 
it's it's a simple message for the people. So I'm trying to tell you. So so what did the polls say? What did the fake? How are they gonna how are they gonna stop this guy? How are they gonna stop Bernie Sanders this time? Right? Because if he delivers that message and he wins on that message, he's not gonna change his policy. Although yeah, he is he's he has shown to be weak in holding his ground. But we'll again if you, if if you can landslide an election, get all the Democrats, all the lying, cheating, and corrupt Democrats to fall in line, which they always do. I mean, if the, if if Bernie Sanders is the Democratic president, all those all those liars and cheaters will just fall in line and do whatever he tells them to do. That's that's usually how it works, right? So so it, you don't you don't lose there, and let let Trump. You know, pass into the, let Trump become a TV star again. Really, because he'll 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 have a good life. Don't worry about it. Buy Trump. You know, it's it's not he's not going to go to jail. He'll he'll start his TV company. That was his intention anyway, right? To be a you know a TV uh, to get a TV like be the next CNN or the next Fox. Trump Television. Uh, that's a good thing. That's a good place for Trump. He's he's made for that. So here's a Morning Star poll puts Biden. With thirty-eight percent of the Democratic vote, and Bernie Sanders with twenty, <laughs> so they're cheating. Is that real? The Hill is is leaning on Morningstar. What does Morningstar say? And there it is. Right? Joe Biden, 38 percent of the vote, and Bernie Sanders twenty percent of the vote, based on sixteen thousand interviews. Elizabeth Warren nine seven seven. Now I found to be the the exact opposite, right? So this is this is morning morning consultants. They, they're just it's just another think tank. If you investigate, you'll find that it's just Democratic money throwing it at it, rig the rig the rig the polls because people are stupid. People will CNN, MSNBC, The Hill, Washington Post, right? New York Times. Now they'll run this new. You're gonna see oh Joe Biden. He's so. He's so electable. Look, look, 16,000 people, 38% said Joe Biden, and only 20% said Bernie Sanders. See, 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 our shit sandwich. You, you said he was a shit sandwich, but no, 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 he's the, he's the man, right? But when I did the poll, remember I went out to Washington Square Park and I did the poll? I actually polled people and walked right up to them. I witnessed to it, right? And what, what did I find? I found the opposite. I found Bernie Sanders to have 38% or 38 out of 106. And and Elizabeth Warren was second, right? And Joe Biden was was buried third with nine, right? He didn't even get 10% of the vote. But here he's got 38% of the vote. Who's lying, right? Uh, my, you think I'm lying? You think I made this shit up? You think I stood out in the park for five hours asking people who would you vote for? You saw my results. You can look. I, I did a simple survey, a piece of paper, if you pick the candidate, right? I didn't say shit about anybody that were listed in alphabetical order, circle the one, if the election was held today, who would you vote for? And that answer was Bernie Sanders. So so where is this morning consultant that the that that uh, that um, this or that the hill is leaning on? Where the hell are you? Bull fucking shit, man. It's bullshit. Uh, so, so Marcus Conti reporting. Wow, what a what a trip! What a deep dive. We took a deep dive into impeachment and treason. But what's really in the best interest of the ninety nine percent? Right, stand on principle. Right, what is the principle? What is the what is the policy that can can best help the people? Identify the problems. What are the problems? Income and wealth inequality in the country. Deep, deep, deep corruption. How do you get rid of those things? You have to get the money out of politics, right? You have to, you have to, uh, you know, take the money away from the the people like the Koch brothers that dump billions of dollars into elections that buy these federal prosecutors that'll go on TV and they'll say anything. They don't care. What do they care? Fucking, they got nothing to lose, right? Only to gain, just lie. The whole thing has become partisan politics, right? And uh, and none of it represents the people. None of it is going to get you know the people single payer health care it's not it's not going to you know uh, secure medicaid it's not going to it's not going to um i'm sorry uh, social security it's not going to secure that it's not going to get free college tuition at city and state universities it's i mean bernie sanders wants a a you know to get to overturn citizens united but we can even go one step further where we could put 
make a constitutional amendment that said that that officially gets money out of politics. I'd say I don't know how to word it, but some way where where bribery becomes illegal again, and when money flows into a congressman, and then we could see his, we could see where the money came from, and then we could see how he's voting. You could make a. a, a it's bribery, right? That's what it is, right? But now it's legal because money is speech, right? So you got to overturn all those things. And none of the candidates, you think Joe Biden wants to overturn money in politics? No, he fucking, they like it. They like the money in politics. They like the, the status quo. They like the way things are. They like corporations ripping everybody off. Joe Biden was for TPP. It was one of the most egregious trade policies ever where it would create a organization of corporations that can function above the Amer- the United States Constitution. There, there, there were basically a, a, a countryless organization of corporate heads that would hold their own kangaroo courts separate of the United States courts. It, it was so unbelievable. And Joe Biden and, and uh, Obama were, were, were the biggest cheerleaders, right along with uh, Hillary Clinton. And you know, Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders supporters were the ones that stopped it ultimately and educated Trump on it. And then Trump, that was one of the first things Trump did was, uh, and a good thing too, he got rid of the TPP, right? Squash the, 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 the forward motion of TPP. But nonetheless, nonetheless, you can pick. So I give you the, the choice, impeachment, treason, or something great for the 99%. Marcus Conti reporting. Don't forget to subscribe.